Good evening, everyone. As Julie mentioned, I am Illinois State Senator Adrienne Johnson, the 30th uh, uh, Senate District. And I like to describe that as being booked in between Wasworth near the Wisconsin border and Wheeling um, in Illinois. And I have about 15 municipalities in my district, mostly in Lake County, and I have a sliver of Cook County. And uh, it is truly an honor to be here with you all today as you, uh, we are amplifying the importance of advocating for the passage of HR 4052. And um, I'm really pleased that Congressman Denny Davis is working on this and really uh, this is going to change generations and impact generations to come. I also want to thank uh, Stewart and Angela and Alfeca for inviting me on today and actually for giving me an opportunity to, to uh, learn more about the National Infrastructure Bank, as well as really listening to my feedback and, and incorporating it into this important legislative measure. And if you all will indulge me, I'll just share a little bit about Illinois and what we're doing, and then kind of tie that into why we need mm -hmm. to continue fighting for this. And you all know it, so a lot of this you, you're probably familiar with. But first, I want to share that in 2019, after neglect and disinvestment under uh, previous administrations that held back Illinois' growth, the General Assembly passed a nation-leading legislative measure to address our infrastructure requirements. Now, this historic bipartisan, because we earlier, I know, uh, Walter, you talked about how this is really bipartisan, Rebuild Illinois program uh, appropriated 41 billion over six years, uh, which aims to modernize Illinois transportation systems and create uh, economic opportunity while at the same time improving safety, mobility, and the quality of life for Illinoisans. Now, through Re Rebuild Illinois, we are investing in our roads. And I know we talked about, um, you know, me, the bridges, and because that's important. It's, there's no red states, blue states. They, when they fall down, that's a problem wherever it happens. So we understand that in Illinois, and, and that's what we are uh, trying to, to uh, invest in, as well as our public transit and ports. And so we are investing in projects throughout our state system and local transportation systems in all of the 102 counties in Illinois. And also our General Assembly in 2021 we passed a law requiring Chicago to remove its lead pipes within 50 years. And effective January 2022, the Lead Service Line Replacement and Notification Act or Public Act 102-0613 that requires community water supplies to create an inventory and replacement plan for their lead service lines. And entities have to report to the Illinois EPA by the 15th of April every year up until 2027. Now, I, I mentioned that to say that, you know, we are really focusing on that in Illinois. We understand that we need additional funding for stormwater infrastructure. And because uh, we, we know there's an issue with climate change. I know we talked about climate change early on and I was really happy to advance the bill this spring session to require the curriculum uh, be developed so that students in high school can learn about climate change and they can be a part of the solution moving forward. And so, as you all know, with the, well, with the Illinois Rebuild, Rebuild Illinois, and then of course the historic bipartisan infrastructure uh, law at the federal level, which appropriated 550 billion, you know, we are really focusing on these much needed repairs in our infrastructure and, and upgrading them accordingly. So I really want to thank, again, Congressman Davis for advancing HR 4052, which, as Alfeca mentioned early on, it creates $5 trillion uh, public bank to invest in infrastructure projects. And this legislative measure um, is really 10 times what the bipartisan uh, law right, is creating. Even with Rebuild Illinois, there's an expiration point for both of these. And then as you all know, because uh, I'm preaching to the coalition choir, <laughs> you know, that this will create a permanent solution. And, you know, and we, we definitely need this. And as you all know, this has been done before in our history of our, our country. 
And while I was listening uh, to the speakers, I was thinking, what did we do back then to get the infrastructure bank passed that we can learn from and build on? But of course, with the 21st century mindset, that'll be something that we should you know, certainly look into. And then I'm going to skip ahead because I was going to talk more about Illinois and our needs, but I should touch on the housing issue because we do know that in Illinois, we need 300,000 affordable housing units in order to take care of the most vulnerable. And with the National Infrastructure Bank, we'll have funding to address that and all these concerns in, in Illinois and then throughout the nation. And then one thing I want to share too is that Senator Ron Villavalon, he's the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee and the committee members I serve on that committee. We are convening a series of trans public hearings so that we can get feedback from constituents throughout Illinois about their uh, concerns with the transit system. You know, we have four systems and uh, we want to get their feedback as we are focusing on our infrastructure priorities. And I, you know, it is really imperative too that we get a lot of these trucks and cars off the road. I know someone mentioned climate change. We talked about that before. So it's very important that we do that. And so in closing, I know that you touched on this Alpaca, but the National Infrastructure Bank creates 25 million new jobs. And that is really important. And I really appreciate the significant focus on the under-resourced urban and rural communities. And most importantly, you know, I feel all of this is important, but the excess profits go to a trust fund with the purpose of providing grants to disinvested and under-resourced communities. And, and that's really important because I know, Julie, you mentioned early on in your remarks about um, environmental justice. And I, so we, we really do need to be mindful of that and we don't want to lose sight of that in this broader uh, conversation. And, and so I hope that, and, and I believe you all do share my enthusiasm for making sure we get HR 4052 across the finish line. I have my margin orders and my action items. I know my two Congress <laughs> uh, persons that I need to talk to. And trust me, I was in the middle of texting one while I was, listening. So uh, with that, thank you very much. I am mm -hmm. so glad that this coalition is um, meeting regularly and working on how we can really make this happen, how we can really get this important legislative measure across the finish line. Thank you very much.